worship team to lead us. Or five for us. Are we good to go back there? Woohoo! Well, good evening. OC Singles for Christ, how are we doing tonight? Happy Friday, happy Christmas month. It is, well, every day is Jesus Day, I think, as a Christian, when we follow our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords. But there's something so special about celebrating our Emmanuel, our God that has left his throne to come and dwell among us and show us his mighty love, die for us, and he rose and we rise with him. Amen? Amen. Well, we're excited to worship with you tonight. My name is Jessica. Say hi, Jessica. Hi, guys. Please say hello to the beautiful Miss Audrey. Say hi, Audrey. And of course, say hi to Daryl on bass tonight. We are excited to worship with you as we continue to usher in the Christmas season, our Emmanuel God with us. How many of us are thankful that no matter how crazy the world gets, and it does seem to be getting crazier by the minute, right? No matter how crazy life and the world gets, we serve a God who is unstoppable. No matter what anyone tries to do to shut down the Lord, he cannot be shut down. Isn't that good news tonight? Yes, amen. So why don't we stand together? For those of that have joined in online, we are so glad that you have tuned in. Of course, hello to my mama in Minnesota. I will see you on Monday. So excited to be home for Christmas. Woohoo! Amen. Let's worship the King.
shout out of praise tonight for our God, who is good all the time. tonight. Turn to someone next to you, give them a little elbow and say, Christmas is here. <laughs> Turn to the neighbor on the other side and say, Jesus looks really good on you tonight. know what it is about that about Jesus but Jesus always makes people look even more beautiful amen it's because of him his beauty his majesty his glory that lives in each and every one of us we're gonna be singing some Christmas songs over the next couple of weeks this is hark the herald the angels sing a little adaptation and the new bridge goes like this. We're going to sing it together. King of heaven, come down.
our eyes closed and our hearts bowed toward heaven tonight, would you just take a moment and just tell the Lord how much you love him? Tell him what you are thankful for tonight. as we stand in your presence, your beautiful presence, we are so grateful for who you are and all you've done. Would you come, Holy Spirit, and have your way in this place tonight? Refresh our hearts in you. Refresh our spirits. Refresh our hope. As we bless your name. Amen. You guys can be seated. Isaiah 9 6 says, For us, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Who could use a wonderful counselor and a mighty God and an everlasting Father and some peace tonight as we say yes to him? This is a song that is near and dear to my heart. I love to do it during Christmas time. I'll never forget the first time I heard it. I actually flew to Minnesota, and there was a huge snowstorm, and it was just those big snowflakes, like the kind you could catch and keep if you wanted to. And boy, did that snow accumulate fast. And I heard this song. It's called Winter Snow. And it's about how our Lord came to us as a humble, quiet babe in the most vulnerable position. He left his glory, he left his throne to come and be cared for by Mary and was raised as a man, but 100% God. So I would just like you to draw close to the Lord tonight. This song is called Winter Snow. But you came like a winter snow, quiet and soft and slow, falling from the sky in the night to the earth below. swept in like a tidal wave or an ocean to ravish our hearts you could have come through like a roaring flood to wipe away the things we've scarred oh, but you came burning 
it was small, it was hidden. It came like a winter snow, quiet and silent and slow. Falling from the sky in the night to the earth below. You came falling from the sky in the night to the earth below. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Father, how grateful we are that you came to us. No more confusion, no more feeling alone, no more desperation, no more wondering who you are. We know who you are because of who you have shown yourself to be, of all of your deeds, of all of your goodness, your love, your grace, your mercy, and your miracles. Thank you for coming to us. And I know each and every one of us are so grateful that you have come to our rescue. Lord, thank you tonight that we can take comfort in you. No matter what we're going through in life, and I know the holidays can bring bittersweet. But Lord, let your goodness rule and reign over us. Come, Father, and revive our hearts tonight as we lean into you and your throne and your beauty. Our Emmanuel, our God with us. Touch every heart that can hear my voice tonight, Lord. Remind them that you are with them. You will never leave them or forsake them. You always have their best in mind. It might not always look like what we want or need or hope, but Lord, you always do what's best. So, Lord, we release our lives into your capable hands tonight. 
Lord, surround every individual with your ministering angels, no matter what they're going through. Comfort them. Bring healing, restoration, refreshment, forgiveness. And let us be the lights of the world that you have called us to be, especially in this season. We love you, and we give this time to you in your word, and we pray this in Jesus' matchless name, and all God's people said, amen. Test, test. Hey, all Kevin, right. I'm going to mute my guitar if you want to. And we'll be back shortly. Or hey, unplugged. Merry Christmas to you all. Glad that you're here tonight. Thank you. Who said that? You're a gentleman. I don't care what they say anybody says about you, Casey. You're a gentleman. Merry Christmas to you all. I'm saying it early because who knows where we're going to be over the next couple of weeks as uh, the holiday fast comes upon us. I know there's holiday parties. I know there's family parties and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so I know that the next few weeks going to be a busy, we're going to be busy, busy, busy. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow night. How many of you guys are signed up for the Christmas dance? All right, we're running out of space. It'll be, uh, we're expecting it to sell out. So if you haven't bought a ticket yet, you better sign up tonight because uh, usually there's about 40 to 50 walk-ups. And then you have the meetup crowd, and so that will basically take us to 200 people. It's going to be crowded. Hopefully you'll enjoy yourself tomorrow. It is our first dance in the new building that we're uh, going to be at. So it's kind of a fun time, but it's also a trial run. So give us a little grace, you know, the lights, bathrooms, whatever. And uh, so it should be a lot of fun. I know the Newport B. No, it's Newport Rig Company is ready to go with some delicious food. And I know the team is ready as well. So, uh, with that said, a couple of things, and for those of you online, welcome. Thanks for tuning in here to Orange County Singles and Couples for Christ. If you happen to be in the area, this is our address uh, currently for the next couple of weeks. And uh, there it is right there. So, if you happen to be in the area, drop on by. We're here till about eh, 12 o'clock tonight. So, what's next for me to talk about? Okay, there's our elder board. And uh, just to let you know that we are still looking for a couple of gentlemen to join the board. If you feel that God has called you and gifted you to be an elder, talk to me afterwards. Love to talk with you. The next slide is, okay, this is our schedule. So today's the ninth. We're meeting tonight. And believe it or not, we only have two more weeks left here before we move. So tomorrow night's the Christmas dance. Be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then the 16th that we're meeting on the 23rd is a special night. So hear me out on this one because there's going to be no karaoke. There's going to be no ping pong. There's going to be no dinner. It'll be a straight worship set with great Christmas music, a great message from a guest speaker, Pastor Rose. The guy is killer speaker, so you're going to enjoy him. And there's going to be Christmas desserts and cakes and stuff like that afterwards. But really, and a night of celebration because the 23rd is our last night here before we uh, move over to the new building. On the 30th, we're closed, so enjoy the 30th off, and then we start right back up again on January 6th at the new location. Expect to receive, for those of you uh, are, that are on the newsletter, there will be multiple new newsletters going out reminding you of the new building. Sure enough, there's our address right there. So if you're not on the internet, take a picture of that real quick. We'll leave that up on a slide. But that's our new address. And uh, again, for those of you, and it's really cool that we're doing a dance there tomorrow night because it will give you a sense of what's going on. So, And it is a building in process, so cut us a little slack because we are doing a lot of upgrades that are taking place there. And, uh, okay, did you take your picture? Oh, I see some cameras out. So we will, I'll get out of the way, and you guys can take pictures. And uh, so there you have it. We'll keep that up for another 10 seconds, okay? Take your pictures now. <clears throat> All right, next slide. Okay, so as you know, we've been uh, uh, raising about $17,000 to uh, facilitate our move. And uh, we are closing the gap. We are about $3,000 to $3,500 short. So if you want to join the parade and helping out with our moving expenses, 
That way we can just move and have no debt. That would be great. We are, if you happen to know of anybody who's got a 15-foot uh, box truck or a 15-foot trailer, either one, come see me afterwards. We, uh, we need one. The new place ha uh, has limited storage. And, man, we've got a lot of stuff over the last nine years. But we're pretty much ready to go. And um, very thankful for, uh, it's amazing how the Lord's provided Man, when I first got into this thing, I thought, ah, it'd be about 15,000 bucks. Then it was 16. Then it was 17. Now it's 18. There's so much going on over there. Uh, hopefully, you'll, uh, everything will be done, at least for what we want to do for the dance. And then between the dance and when we start, there will be more improvements uh, so that when we launch on the 6th, a lot will be done. So um, let's see. Anything else I need to cover before we have our guest speaker up? I think not. So, Pastor Mark, why don't you come on up? Pastor Mark is our guest speaker tonight. Uh, I know the newsletter said it would be me in here and Pastor Mark in room 10, but frankly, I had so much work to do today, I couldn't get to my message. And so uh, I asked Pastor Mark if he wouldn't mind moving to the auditorium. So that's an old slide from Wednesday. So Pastor Mark said, sure, I'll step up. So here he is, and uh, let's pray over Pastor Mark. Please extend a right hand of fellowship towards Pastor Mark and ask the Lord's anointing on him. And Pastor, you're ready to go. Father in heaven, we just thank you so much for our time together this evening. Thank you for Jessica and the worship band. And thank you for the opportunity to worship you. Thank you to the community time before and afterwards. But now we focus on the word of God. Pray to be with your servant, uh, Pastor Mark. Father God, I pray to you fill him with the Holy Spirit. Use him for your glory and honor and praise. And may our hearts be fallow ground to receive the seed of the word of God into our lives so that life change takes place. Bless this time, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Did you say you're going to kill it? You're a, you're going to kill the speaker or you're a killer speaker? Oh, okay. I heard, I heard kill the speaker. I'm sorry. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Leave that to John to laugh at me now. So. Anyways, God bless you all this evening. I hope everybody's having a good uh, evening tonight. If this thing starts to make noise, I promise I'll probably end up using your microphone, okay? So they got this thing going on. They don't know you're there. Okay. Well, if you have your Bibles with you, open up to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Handheld, and here you go, Pastor. Yes, sir. All right, I got the mic now. Woo! Not yet, not till later. All right, everybody uh, excited about Christmas? You got everything done? Uh, I know a lot of people that haven't done cards for for four or five years. We we decide, you know what? Let's do it. So uh, family thinks we're still alive. So. As I'm sending them out, I'm getting calls back saying, why did you send cards? We're not sending cards. Why are you doing Oh, <laughs> uh, It's kind of funny. Uh, how many of you send them out like a couple days before Christmas so that when they get them, it's too late for them to send them? Then you look at the post date. They sent them after. No, we're, we're not playing that game at our house. So, Anyways, Luke chapter 1. Let's pray as we open up the word and look at this incredible passage of Scripture. Lord, we ask that you administer to us right now. You promised Jesus that the Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us in all truth. So bless your people this evening. Lord, we, uh, I'm, I'm just amazed that there's two or more gathered. Lord, that with so many things to do and it's such a busy time to, to take a moment and just to open up our hearts and to receive from you. Speak to us, Jesus minister to us in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, that first slide would come up, please. Uh, in Luke chapter one, let me just read to you the, uh, the two verses from verse 26 to 27. We got only about four slides, but verses 26 to 27, it says now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city named Nazareth to a virgin that was betrothed, engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was? You all know, unless you're from somewhere else. But yeah, the virgin's name was Mary. 
Oh, what an incredible thing this is. We, we looked at, uh, in my class last week, we looked at Matthew 1, where God speaks to Joseph through a dream. But here, uh, Mary gets the distinction of getting a personalized visit from one of the big archangels, Gabriel. And one of the, the, the things that's brought up twice is that she is a virgin. It's interesting, uh, when we look at that for a moment, that... Uh, how in, in our culture today, how that is mocked, you know, they, any type of TV show or movie, they, they make fun of people that, that are virgins, that have never slept with someone or, or have not married or, uh, or the idea that, that you have w- been holding yourself for that right person. Well, remember, at this time, Mary's probably in her young teens, and of course, she's engaged, but she is physically a virgin, and therefore, she is qualified for what God wants to do in her life. She's qualified. Well, she's also qualified because she's of the line of David. Uh, both Joseph and her, you could trace them all the way back. They, they go all the way to uh, the genealogy of King David, all the way back to Abraham. And I think Mary in chapter 4 even goes back to Adam uh, and the firstborn of Adam. But she had to be a virgin in order for this to take place. We know as we're reading through the Old Testament, like the book of Exodus or Leviticus, especially when it comes to the sacrifices, one of the things that you see quite a bit is that the lamb, the sacrifice, is to be without blemish, without spot, and is to be pure. And it's all symbolic, of course, on how God is holy, God is pure, God is righteous, and that that sacrifice that's to cover your blotch, your sin, your wickedness or whatever has to come from a lamb without sin, without spot. And, and in a sense, symbolically, if you would, though it is still a criteria because we know from Isaiah a thousand years before in chapter 7, verse 14, that, that a virgin would have a child. So we, we know that, that this was already prophesied, but, but it, it especially goes to Mary because she's not only of the line of David, but because she's kept herself. She's never uh, slept with a man, as as she will later say in uh, in, in verse 34, how can this happen? I I don't know a man. That's Bible language for I've never had sex. I've never been married. I'm still a virgin. How can I become impregnated? And you know, when we we look at this, if you put the, the, uh, that one first slide back up again, uh, there's a scripture there in, in 2 Timothy, uh, verse uh, chapter two, verse twenty one, and, and look at what it says. It says, "If if we keep ourselves pure, you'll be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean, and you will be ready for the master to use for every good work." Again, uh, if you keep yourself pure, you'll be a special utensil, honorable for use. Your life will be clean, and you'll be ready for the master to use you in every good work. The idea that that God gives purpose to Mary's purity, that the God gives purpose even to this day, that uh, he's looking for vessels that would be fit for the master's use. You know, when we we think of this, um, I I think of how when when Mary is maybe telling the story to Mary Magdalene, well, this is what happened uh, 33 years ago, Mary Magdalene, and remember she was a prostitute, and 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 this is how the Lord did it. You know, he he came to me and and, and the angel spoke and, and and called me the Virgin Mary, and 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 I had Jesus come into me from from the Father through the Holy Spirit. Mary Magdalene probably felt a little down, like, geez, I could have never been that woman, because I was not a virgin. Physically and morally, perhaps she was not. But the wonderful thing is when she met Jesus, the Bible says we become a new creation. All the old is past. Behold, all things become new. Matter of fact, when we are coming back to this earth, whether we're raptured or whether we go to be with the Lord uh, when we pass away, whichever comes first, it's going to happen either way. When the Lord is coming back to establish his kingdom here on earth in in chapter 19 of of Revelation, in verse 7, it says, Let's be glad, let's rejoice. His wife has made herself ready. And it says it's been granted to the wife, that is the church, to be clean and bright, for fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. 
And then again, dropping down a few more verses in verse 14 of chapter 19 of Revelation, it says, The armies of heaven, all of us, when we come back with Jesus, were clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Isn't that amazing that speaking of how when we come to Christ, whatever wretched life we had before, and maybe someone is 100% still virgin physically, maybe even in our own gathering, but probably for most or a lot of us, we're past that stage, and it's like, Lord, how can you use me? How can I be that vessel if I've got so much junk, so much baggage, and, and I'm not? I, I don't have, you can't trace, you, you, if I become president, they're, they're going to go back to when I was in first grade, and I flicked a, burger, a booger on Noreen Johnson's desk, and the, the sinfulness of my life from way back. It's like, how can I be used by you, God? Well, the wonderful thing is, is her body was used as a vessel for the Messiah. But the wonderful truth is, is our lives, our hearts are now encompassed with Jesus Christ. He comes into us, not because we're virgins, but because we have the righteousness of Jesus. We've been covered and cleansed by his blood. And, and the problem we have as a believer is we have two extremes. One extreme says, yeah, well, God can use anybody. That's true. He used a donkey to speak to Balaam, or to put it in the King James, a jackass, to speak to Balaam, the mad prophet. And then that wicked, evil prophet even prophesied about the star that would be over Bethlehem that would be used for the wise men to come to see Jesus. So even that evil prophet Balaam was used by God. So yes, God can use anybody at any time. But as that scripture we read in, in 2 Timothy says, he's looking for a vessel that's fit for the master's use. And what does that vessel look like today for you and I? It's a vessel that takes time to get in the word. The word of God is what keeps us from sin. The word of God is what cleanses us. The word of God is what keeps us pure because we are sinners saved by grace. And every time I open up his word, God speaks to my heart and says, oh, this is an area, Mark. You, this can't be. Every time I, I pray, I, I, I say that prayer so many times. Uh, the, the end verse of Psalm 139, search me, O God, try me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in the way everlasting. And I know that as a believer, we are all not just from day one, we repent of our sins and follow Jesus, but we are always in a state of repenting, always in a place of God, I want to live for you. I want to walk with you. Is there something not right in my heart? Search me, O God, because blessed are the pure in heart they shall see God. So yes, God can use anybody, but oh, how there's power and purpose to purity. There's something about when we're growing with the Lord, loving the Lord, walking with the Lord, you're, you're used in a more fluid, more wonderful way. So going back now to, to Luke chapter one, he comes to the virgin, Mary, who's of the house of David, in the second slide there, there if you could put up the second one, it says, and then the angel coming in said to her, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when he saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what type of a greeting is this? Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Wow. Wow. The angel Gabriel tells her, you have received an abundance of grace. As the scripture says in Titus 2.11, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared, and he appeared first here to Mary, the gloriousness of his grace. How remarkable. Remember, this gal's in her early teens. She hasn't done a lot, knows a lot. She's kept herself pure. She's probably... Uh, what I would consider one of the remnant of Israel. God always had a remnant to, to keep the candle lit for uh, the Messiah. God always had a group of people that was still hoping to seek uh, the Messiah coming, and she must have had godly parents. But be it as it may, when the angel Gabriel sees her, he says the word rejoice. That word rejoice is the word in the Greek language, hiero, which is the word grace. Grace. And then 
Maybe he paused. I got a little comma in mind. There was no commas written in the scripture. But the idea is there might have been a pause because the next word is highly favored, which is highly graced. Hierokito. In other words, super graced. When the angel looked at Mary, he said, oh, my gosh, that the Lord, the king of kings, is going to come down to this earth among sinful men and then reduce himself, as, as uh, Paul says in, in, uh, in Philippians chapter 2, humble himself, put his, his, his gloriousness to the side and take on human flesh and come into your womb, into, into you. My gosh, the grace that God has given you, the super grace that you're receiving, you're amazingly blessed to have this opportunity to be a vessel to be used by God in this way. Super, super grace. Now, you all know what grace means. It's not what you say before you eat. Let's say grace, thank you for this food. <laughs> that's, that's a cool thing too. Grace means God's favor and loving kindness. Ready for this? God's favor and loving kindness, unmerited and undeserved. Unmerited and undeserved. God is looking at Mary and through the angel, uh, Gabriel is telling her, Mary, God is going to do something so mind-boggling, so loving, so amazing. And it's because of grace, unmerited, undeserved. You met the, the first criteria, being a virgin. You met the second one, you're from the house of David. But as far as God coming into you, that's purely, purely by the grace of God. Wow. Chosen to be his vessel by grace. Chosen to be his vessel by grace. Amazing. You know, when we think of our own lives, why did God choose you? Oh, I chose Mark because he, he was a, a virgin boy and he never did nothing wrong and, and he never cheated. And, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into Mark's life. I, he's going to receive me. I'm going to be a savior because he's such a good person. No, I was saved by grace. By grace. Ephesians chapter 2, stealing some verses from Pastor Thomas, who's been teaching through the book of Ephesians. In Ephesians 2, 4, it says, God, who's so rich in mercy, because of his great love, which he has loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Oh, in the ages to come, he's going to show us the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. And you all know this. It's one of your top 20 memory verses. For by grace, you have been saved, not of works. It's through faith, not of works. It's the gift of God, lest anyone should brag or boast. Not even Mary could walk around and say, ha, I've got Jesus in me because I'm blessed Mary. If anything, she'd say, I've been so blessed by God's grace that he is in me, that I'm going to be the vessel from which the Messiah would go forth. You know, even Paul the Apostle, when he was looking at his calling in 1 Corinthians 4, 7, he says, you know what? Whatever I've received, I've received from the Lord. So why do we boast as if we've received it from ourselves or got it by ourselves? Whatever we have, We've received it by God, by his grace. Now, I want you to think of this as we go back to that slide too, just for a moment. What you have is even greater than what Mary had at that moment. At that moment, she just had, not yet, but she's going to have Jesus inside of her womb. And that's just such a mind bogger. When we get to heaven, we're going to really say, God, we want to see this in, in, in living color. How did it happen? But the mind blower is, is Jesus would go inside the womb physically. But what you, you and I have, which is greater than Mary, is we have Jesus inside of us spiritually. We have an intimate, deep relationship with Jesus Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ is living in me. And the cool thing with Mary, when we go to Acts chapter 1, verse 14, she's one of those 120 waiting 
praying after the ascension of Jesus and 40 days have gone by. She's waiting now for Jesus, who has now gone beyond the part of my son. He is the Savior. He's waiting for him to pour out the Holy Spirit. And she's waiting for the Holy Spirit, just like all the other believers. Oh, how awesome is that? Yes, she received super grace, amazing grace, that she would be the one that would have Jesus come into her. And perhaps the trouble that she was feeling about this saying, the troublingness of the saying is, why am I so graced? Why do I have such incredible favor? There was definitely a humility there, wasn't it? There was a humbleness about that. And he had to repeat it to her again in verse 30 when he says, Mary, you found favor with God. Just as I could say with all authority and absolute truth, each one of you here that has received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have found favor with God. You are the object now of his love, his grace, and his mercy. You have found favor even as this young gal found favor so many years ago. Well, we go to verse 31. The next slide, please. And behold, Mary, you're going to conceive in your womb. Verse 31, you're going to conceive in your womb, and you're going to bring forth a son, and you're going to call his name Yahshua, or Jesus, or as the angel Gabriel told Joseph uh, afterwards, obviously, that he will save his people from his sins. You're going to have the Messiah, Yeshua Yamashiach, the Messiah, Christ the Savior. And verse 32, I love it. I hope you underline it. He will be great. Who will be great? He will be great. And he will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and ever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. We emphasize this part right here of the greatness of Jesus. Titus 2.13, Paul says that we look forward to that blessed hope, the second coming, the wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, your your, uh, folks that stop at your door, knocking on the door, the watchtower folks, they disguise it. They don't want to tell you they're watchtower. They don't want to say they're Jehovah's Witnesses. They come off as what they look, they look super nice, and they are nice. They're, they're, They're doing what they think is right or they're wrong. And one of the things that they have very clearly in their doctrine is that Jesus is not God. And here it's so clear in the scripture. He's our great God. He's our Savior, Jesus Christ. And man, he's coming back. and He'll be revealed. He will appear. That God is the greatest of all. And next week when we look at uh, Jesus in John chapter 1, we're going to see that the word became flesh. And dwelt amongst us. And that the word is God. Jesus is God. He's part of the Godhead. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now notice that when Gabriel came to Mary. He didn't say, Mary, just want you to know. That even after you have Jesus, you'll continue to be a virgin for the rest of your life. He didn't say that. The scripture says Jesus had brothers and sisters. We know that says Joseph did not know her. That's the biblical term for saying they didn't consummate their marriage until Jesus was born. And then the 40 days would have to go by. That was the time allotted for the women to have a break from the guy. And then all through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the brothers, the sisters of Jesus. So she wasn't, he didn't say you're going to be a virgin forever. He didn't say, Mary, behold, you're going to have Jesus And you're going to be the holy queen of heaven. Nowhere. (coughs) Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. He didn't say, Gabriel didn't tell Mary, you're going to be the mediator between God and man. And people are going to pray to you because you will be their spokesman. He didn't say that either. That didn't come into the church till the third century as they were rooted in a pagan idolatrous worship that had nothing to do with the truth of who Mary truly is. But at the same time, 
as a believer, I don't want to downplay Mary because we're not into worshiping Mary, right? We want to honor her just as we honor in Hebrews chapter 11, the men and women of faith. She belongs in that chapter, perhaps in the part where they don't mention the names that there's many others, because what she had to do was amazing, that she had this distinction. She had this one-time ministry, and then, and then the struggle, gals, you could imagine the struggle she had. He's Jesus, but, but, but he's my son. He's, he's Jesus, but, uh, you know, he, he's two years old. I, I got to change the diapers. He's Jesus, but now he's in the cross. I mean, the hardship Mary had must have been extremely difficult, but certainly after the resurrection, she understood clearly she became a believer and she loves the Lord. And we appreciate her greatly and admire her and learn from her. Verse 34 of, of Luke, the next uh, slide, please. It says, then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? I've never known a man. How's this going to happen? This isn't doubt. This isn't like when Sarah, when the angels came and they were speaking to, to Abraham, remember? <laughs> Abraham is old and withered. And poor Sarah, she's, she's a haggy-baggy gal. She's way past menopause. She's just way beyond all that. And, and the angel says, you know, this time in nine months, Sarah's going to have a baby. <laughs> and it says she started laughing in herself. What a joke. How can I have pleasure in this old age? Are you kidding me? Old Abe and me, we could, you know, we were in separate beds now, that type of thing, right? Just you got to be kidding. And then the angel said, oh, you're laughing, huh? You're laughing. Matter of fact, you're going to name your son Laughter. And she named him Isaac. She, she didn't believe that it was going to happen. And I don't think Mary here is saying, how is this going to happen? There's no way it's going to happen. Listen, God gives us his word. God gives us his promises. And it's up to us to say, okay, Lord, how do you want to unravel this? How do you want to unpack this? How do you want to make this real in my life? It's okay to ask that. You said, you promised, for example, the one we're all so familiar with, that you'll give us this day our daily bread. So, Lord, where am I going to get my next meal? What's going to happen next? Where am I heading? It's okay to ask that. It's an honest, sincere question. And so the angel answered her in verse 35. The angel answered and said, well, here's how it's going to happen. <laughs> The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Well, that doesn't really answer it for you technically, right? <laughs> How's it going to happen? It's almost like saying, don't worry about it. The Holy Spirit's going to do it. There's some things I don't have a clue how it's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen one year from now, five years from now, 10, 20 I don't know what's going to happen to our economy. I don't know where we're going or how we're getting there. But I do know this, that the Holy Spirit is with us. He's going to lead us. He's going to guide us. He's promised that he will always be there to speak the truth and help us in every situation. And the fruitfulness that will come to Mary, the fruitfulness that will come to our life has to be through the Holy Spirit. I remember they asked a pastor once, I think it was Spurgeon. If you took out the Holy Spirit from the church, everything else that's still running is not of God. In other words, everything has to be guided, directed, led, empowered by the Holy Spirit. I love this. And in verse 36, he gives her a faith booster. Gives her a little faith boost. Remember when Abraham was wondering, how am I going to have a son? I'm so old. It's not going to happen. Lord, why don't you just let Eliezer be my servant? Uh, let him be uh, the, the promised one. And God said, no, I'm going to have to boost your faith, Abraham. Look up at the stars. <sighs> Look up at the stars. Wow. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament is handiwork. Day by day, they're uttering speech. God, the universe is amazing. Oh. I know you can do it because you are great and awesome. He boosted his faith by just having him look at the stars. So how does he boost Mary's faith? He says, you remember Elizabeth? Every time you guys would have 
family get together, she was always the one in the corner. <laughs> What's wrong, Elizabeth? I can't have kids, and now I'm an old gal. I can't conceive. She was barren. Well, guess what, Elizabeth, your relative, has conceived in her old age, and now she's six months pregnant. She who was called barren. Oh, man, that must have made Mary's heart skip. Oh, wow. God, you're awesome. You're so faithful. You're, we've been praying for her for so long. And now she's pregnant. And then the angel says to her something that's really powerful. In verse 37, he says, With God, nothing will be impossible. With God, nothing will be impossible. How's it going to happen that you're going to have a baby never knowing a man? How's it going to happen? Well, let's all go back to Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If you could read that and believe that God created the heavens and the earth and that each day of creation, God did some incredible work and on the seventh day he rested. If you can believe that God can do something from nothing, with God, nothing will be impossible. This is almost like a, a verse that you, we got to put in parentheses way out here because it, it's for everything, isn't it? That nothing is impossible for God. Oh, you'll never be able to do that, Mark. Because everybody's tried. Nobody can. You'll never be able to buy a house. You'll never get a job. You'll never get this. You'll never get that. Everybody's always been that, you know, like the, like the 10 spies that came back after spying out the land for 40 days. Oh, it's beautiful, but too many giants, too many walled cities. We can't do it. We can't do it. No way. But God says nothing is impossible for me. Nothing is impossible for me. And there's a couple other scriptures. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Or how about that one where the disciples saw the rich young ruler walk away from Jesus when Jesus said, you want to follow me? Sell it all. Stocks, bonds, everything. Liquidate it. Give it to the poor. Follow me. Well, the guy was a billionaire. He's a millionaire. He had a lot and he walked away and Jesus was sad. And the disciples said, oh my gosh. If following Jesus means I got to give up things that I love and possess, then who's going to get saved? Who's going to ever want to come to Jesus? Because after all, you come to Jesus to get stuff, right? You don't come to Jesus to give stuff like your life. And Jesus said, with men, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Only the Lord put on your heart to follow Jesus. Only the Lord puts on your heart to, to give, to be generous uh, as the scripture says, to, to just give it out and say, Lord, I, I trust you. Well, when Mary heard that, hold that slide up just for a few more seconds. When Mary heard this, I love what she says in verse 38. Listen to the wisdom of Mary. And don't think of that song. Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be. To me, according to your word, and the angel departed from her. Let it be. She heard the word of God, but she did something that's critical that we all have to do. It's not enough to just hear the word of God. You have to unite your faith with the word of God. You have to believe in the word of God. Anybody could hear it, but hearing it and then believing it. And the words, let it be there. Let it be. Get that song out of your head. That word, let it be. It's equal to the word amen. When we say amen, what is amen? You know, it's the, it's the rubber stamp. It's, the, it's like the forever post office stamp. You know, it's forever. Boom, you stamp it. it, it end of your little prayer mail. No, the word amen means so be it or go for it or yes, yes, Lord. I love it. Remember when Paul said to the Corinthians, all the promises of God are yes and amen. Yes and amen. So when, when this young gal, she hears what, she hears this, I've been incredibly blessed. God has given me amazing grace. My relative Elizabeth, she's pregnant now. God's going to do something amazing. It hasn't happened yet. But she's saying, go for it. Do it, Lord. Let it be. Let it be according to your word. Man, that, that's an action of faith. That is surrendering and saying, Lord, do what you want to do in my life. I trust you. And, and notice this. It hasn't happened yet. 
And yet when she, uh, later Elizabeth, when, when Elizabeth goes and visits uh, Mary in verse 45, uh, Mary, uh, Elizabeth says to Mary, Blessed is she who has believed that the word will be fulfilled of those things that were told her from the Lord. Oh, how happy are we when we believe what God has said he wants to do. And when Mary broke out in her little worship praise in a little portion later in this chapter, she said, oh, he who is mighty has done, past tense, has done great things for me. You haven't even had it done yet. You're not even, you're, you're not even, uh, you, know, there's, you don't even got the baby bump yet. And you're already saying has done because faith believes as if God had already has done it because if God says it, he's going to do it. If you bring that, that one slide up again, just for a second, when God says he's going to do it, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it, amen. Let it be, let it be. God, you've told me to put faith in you, trust in you, a faith that pleases God. Oh, how God loves it when we believe his word. Uh, Hebrews eleven six. it's another one of our memory verses. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Oh, Mary had the faith, surrendering, allowing God's word to be fulfilled. Well, I'll put up the next slide, if you would, just for a moment. Let's just do a little recap here of what we looked at. The virgin vessel that to be ready for the master's use always ready, that God will, will bless, that there's always a purpose in purity. Don't let believers or unbelievers say, oh, it's okay, you can do that. Hey, if God is convicting your heart not to do something, if you know it's a sin in your heart, you're following a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. What may be freedom to you may not be freedom or liberty to me. I want to walk with the Lord and let the Lord use me. And I know with purity, God uses us in a most wonderful way. The second thing we looked at, the glory of his grace, the amazing grace that she received. All of us have received abundant grace. Matter of fact, in, in John chapter 1, it says we've received grace upon grace upon grace. You guys ever play baseball when you're you young kids, you know, out in the baseball field? And who, who's the first guy that goes up to bat? You, you put the bat there, and one guy puts his hand on the bottom, and then the other guy puts his hand on the top, and you keep going. And whoever gets to the top, he gets the bat. That's grace upon grace upon grace. Oh, the glory of his grace. That Christmas time is a time to think of God's grace, the greatness of Jesus. Never talk, not talk enough about that. Anyone greater in our life than the King of kings or Lord of lords? And then fourthly, does our faith please God? When we read the promises of God, can we say as Mary, yes, Lord, let it be. I trust you. I believe in you. Go for it. Go for it, Lord. Well, we have just a couple more seconds here. I didn't put a slide on this one. But it's funny how the word Messiah and messy kind of go together, don't they? I'm not talking about the Argentine and soccer player. Get that out of your head. Though he's pretty cool. <laughs> Have you been watching World Cup, Mark? None of your business. But anyways, Christmas is a messy time. It was messy. I mean, look at what happened. Right now, it's all exciting. Woo, God's going to do this great thing in my life, right? Meanwhile, how am I going to tell Joseph? That's going to get tough. To tell Joseph, by the way, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. And then uh, nine months later, they got their little Jenny Lynn crib. Everything's all excited, all set up in Nazareth. The family's all huddled around getting ready for the baby. And now we got to obey Caesar and do the trek 70 to 80 miles, missing all the stop points because we're going slow. And she's doing, you ladies know what the waddle is, right? She's doing the waddle. She's nine months pregnant. Oh, but Precious Moments has her on a, on a little pony, and, and my Hallmark card shows her on a horse. Nowhere in the Bible is she on a donkey or a pony and the horse. She's huffing it. She's walking. 
that's messy. And then to be born in a stable. And then to know that you're partly responsible for all the two-year-olds in the Bethlehem area to get slaughtered. And then to have Herod hate your guts. And then to have people hate your son. And then for her to see him hanging on the cross. And, and you're thinking, oh, Christmas is just so, it's so wonderful. It was a messy, hard time. But the glorious truth is, is in the end, the Lord prevailed. In the end. Jesus was glorified. Jesus rose again from the dead. Mary knows Jesus as her Savior, and the Lord is coming back. I just feel it's so much like our lives. God gives us promises. We ask God, how are you going to do it? And it's the between A and B that's the tough road, isn't it? Like when God told the disciples, we're going to the other side of the lake. Oh, great, a sailing trip. And then here comes a storm. That's a part of reality, isn't it? It's a part of life. And yet God blesses God takes care of it, and certainly his ways are not my ways, though I try to figure them out all the time. Well, the last thing I just want to end with right now is also, excuse me, making an invitation for anybody that has yet to ask Jesus Christ into, your, into their life. As the band comes up in a few seconds here, those that are maybe watching on TV or internet or wherever, or maybe you came here tonight and you still, you know, you, you like the people. There's some nice people here. Uh, you, you, you like the, the music. You like, you know, the positiveness of it. You like the ping pong or all the other, the dances are fun. But you know, there's something more. Jesus is more than just fun and Christmas lights and, and all the fun stuff we celebrate as people here. Jesus wants to come in and take residence in your life. He wants to be great. He wants to be the Lord. He wants to save you because that's what his name means. Jesus is savior of our sins. So I'm going to say a real simple prayer if you're watching or listening or if you're here tonight. And it's just asking the savior, Jesus Christ, to come into your heart and to make you his child. Let's pray, would you? Jesus... Thank you that you took it upon yourself to do this mission, to come to this earth, knowing that some would receive you and some would reject you. But you said as many as would receive you, to them you would give life and life everlasting and make them children of God. So, Lord, we just want to say this prayer for whoever is it was out there that wants to pray it right now with us. Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I open up my heart and make room for you to come in. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Make me your child. Help me to understand truly what it is to know you and to follow you. And if anyone else here as well, maybe you've kind of walked away from the Lord and maybe you're just really depressed and discouraged. These holidays can be such a hardship. Just right now, just to stand on God's word. I've never left you or forsaken you. Believe it. Unite your heart by faith. He's here with you right now. Reach out to Jesus. Let him fill you afresh with the Holy Spirit, righteousness, peace, and joy. Thank you, Lord. Lord, for those that maybe prayed that prayer to invite you, and I pray that you would seal them right now, confirm in their hearts that they are yours. And for the rest of us, Lord, may we continue to exert that faith and trust and love, even as Mary did as a young girl. May we trust you with all of our hearts and just enjoy peacefully this wonderful time of remembering what you did for us and where you were going, and that you're also coming back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, why don't we all stand? Well, uh, maybe there's one more song or so, and, and just give you a little break to stand up for a second. And uh, let's, uh, let's, let's give the Lord some of our glory and our praise. I know there's got to be an awesome song that we're going to be singing to Jesus right now. And how wonderful that... The Bible says God looks down from heaven to see if there's anybody looking up. You all looking up? We're looking up to the Lord. Can't wait to see our Savior face to face. Meanwhile, 
right here in our hearts. He's right here in our midst. God bless you, and let's continue to worship the Lord. Amen. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? you 
the Lord some praise tonight. You can be seated. As we continue in this time of worship, we are going to go ahead and take up our offering tonight. We first and foremost are always so blessed by your attendance here, by our partnership, and so grateful and thankful that you have chosen to not only spend Friday nights with us, but to sow seeds into the kingdom work that God is doing in and through this ministry and has been doing for 10 years. And we so look forward to the next season in our new location after the new year. So that being said, we are going to pray over these gifts tonight. Um, if you have cash or a check and you need an envelope tonight, if you would just lift up your hand, we would love to put an envelope in your hands. Lift them up nice and high. And of course, if you're like me and you don't carry cash or a checkbook around with you, um, you are welcome to bring that home with you and pray over it. Bring it back next Friday. We are here every single Friday. And of course, you can bring it back and uh, share the love of Christ that way. We do have a few other ways that you can give. Of course, you can go to our website, ocsinglesforchrist.org. You can click on the giving button and it'll prompt you through how to give through the site. And you can also set up an auto pay there, which is super easy and takes the think work out of it. And of course, you can use the Zelle app. The transfers go direct. Just use the T-Rose uh, email address up there. And of course, any banking institution usually use Zelle interface for giving and receiving. So you can use that as well through your bank. Of course, you can always mail in a check at our P.O. box that is above, and I believe it's on the envelope. So that being said, I would like to leave you with this scripture. It is Proverbs 19.17. It says, The one who is gracious to the poor lends to the Lord. I love that God sees our giving as a direct giving to him, to him and him alone, even though we are the beneficiaries of graciousness. So, that is a blessing. So the one who is gracious to the poor lends to the Lord, and the Lord will repay him for his good deed. What a promise that no matter what, as we are generous with our tithes, our offerings, our, our encouragement to one another, maybe our time, whatever it is, God is a gracious rewarder of our giving. So let's just go ahead to pray together and ask the Lord to bless these gifts. Father, we are so grateful for the privilege of giving back to you, to sow seeds into your kingdom work that you continue to do in and through us. We are so grateful that you have chosen us as vessels of generosity. And Lord, I know that times are tough financially and with inflation and everything going on in the world, Lord, but I love that all you see is our hearts. You're simply looking for the generosity and kindness of our heart toward our King. So, Lord, we give unto you tonight. Would you take these gifts and multiply them for your glory, for your honor? Let them be fruitful for your kingdom work. We ask this in your name. Amen. Ushers, come on forward and we'll collect the offering. For you are good, for you are good, for you are good to me. For you are good, for you are good, for you are good all the time, Lord. For you are good, for you are good, for you.
All right. Hey, give it up for Joy and Jessica and Daryl. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Glad that you're here this evening. And uh, let's see, next week is Joel, right? We have Joel Valente will be our worship leader on, uh, next Friday and the 23rd. Jessica will, and her band will be back as we enjoy our Christmas celebration on the 23rd. So a uh, couple things before we close. Number one, if you, uh, Pastor Mark, uh, did a wonderful invitation. If any of you prayed that prayer to accept Jesus Christ into your heart to be your Savior and Lord, please see me afterwards. I would love to speak with you and nail that down in your life. I'll be running around here someplace and um, or in the uh, foyer. I'd love to talk with you. Uh, tomorrow night is our dance. Looking forward to seeing those of you who are going to be there all spiffy and in your semi-formal, formal attire or your however you plan on being there. Just make sure you're not in jeans because uh, you would be inappropriately dressed and I'll send you home. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, it's going to be a fun event. Also, uh, with regards to prayer, um, during the week, I know that we're, uh, lots of things come up that we may need prayer over. We do have a, uh, an email address to hear from you, to pray for you, and uh, it'll be up, uh, I think it'll be up on the slides in just a moment. There it is, prayer at ocsfc1.org. That is our prayer line. Please uh, send uh, your prayer requests. We do pray over every single prayer that comes through. And then finally tonight, uh, as we close our broadcast, thank you for those who are online. And if you would like to share tonight's broadcast, uh, what you saw tonight with friends and family, easiest way to do that is to go to Facebook. And uh, the address there is www.facebook.com forward slash and then OC Singles for Christ right in the middle there. And uh, you'll see the broadcast. It's already archived as soon as we turn the cameras off. You can go to it. There's a little share button. Send it to your friends and family or whoever you think uh, would be blessed by the message tonight, which is a great message on Mary. And I uh, was in the office uh, watching online. And it was a perfect broadcast, by the way. Thank you guys in the back. So with that said, uh, thank you so much for being here. We look forward to seeing those of you who are going to dance tomorrow night. If not, see you next Wednesday, uh, Friday. And just now, to my left, your right, is the one and only uh, Yamo, who's going to cover some announcements for us. All right. Hey, keep it going. Show the love for Pastor Thomas. Keeping it real. All right. So, y'all doing good? Uh, hey, do me a favor. Uh, go back to that picture.